Today we're going to be looking at the difference between new and init in a nutshell, which means I'm just going to blatantly or very simply show you what they do. If you want to learn more about this, there are plenty of videos on YouTube, but this will help you get started with understanding the difference and what they actually do. So to get started, I'm going to create a class called connection and connection is going to be a class that's dedicated to establishing an internet connection. And we want to make sure that the user only creates one internet connection at a time, because if you create multiple internet connections from the same device, that might be a waste of time. It might not even make sense in your program. So we're going to create a singleton pattern with this class. Now, first I'm going to create a private attribute called instance because we only want to have one instance of this class running at all times. And then we're going to use the new method, the new Dunder method. So underscore underscore new. And first of all, if you have code completion on, or if you're using PyCharm, you're going to see it's going to fill out the parameters with a class, with some arguments and with some keyword arguments. But what's important to note is that we are working with the class here. And that's already one major difference than when we are working with the init. Now, what we want to check in here is if the class instance is none, then we're going to create a new connection. So we're going to say print. And here we're going to type in connecting something that the user can see. And here we'll type in class instance is going to equal the super call. And we want to create a new instance from this class. So we're just going to pass in the class here. So now we have a new instance of the class, which means each time we try to create a new object from this class, it's going to check if this class is none. And since this will not be none the next time we create an object, it's not going to create a new instance. But something that's very important when you use the new Dunder method is to return the class or the instance. So here we'll return class instance. Because if you return nothing, then it's not going to be able to call the initializer. You always need to return some sort of class or object. So that's what happens if the instance is none, if this is the first object we're creating, else we're going to print warning, there's already an instance of connection. And we're, we're just going to return whatever the class instance is. So that's already the one that has been created. So that's a very simple example of using new. Now let's create our initializer. So down here, we'll type in def init. And all we're going to do is print connected to the internet. So let's try to create a connection. Here we'll type in connection because we want to connect to the internet and that's going to equal a connection. As soon as we run this, we're going to get connected to the internet. We're going to try to connect and now we are connected. But that doesn't really say anything about what we just did. So let's try to make a second connection. We'll call that connection number two. If we run connection number two, we're going to get the else block triggered because right now when we were trying to create this instance, it checked that instance was none. And since that was not the case, it went to the else block and it returned to us the current instance. Now, what does it mean if it returns to us the current instance? Well, it means that we have the exact same instance for both of these variables. And if we print, let's say connection is equal to connection two, we will get true because both of these point to the same object. We're pointing to the instance that we created earlier, the first instance. So now no matter what we do, if we try to create a new connection while we're already connected or while we already have a connection object, it's not going to do that. It's going to tell us there's already a connection so we don't waste those resources. A more common example with the singleton pattern would be with a database. You don't want to create several instances of the same database because that just makes things a bit more complicated, but this example should get the point across. So to sum up this example, the new Dunder method is always called before the initializer and it takes care of object creation, which means you can actually include some extra functionality that modifies the class before actually creating the instance. The initializer does not return anything as you can see, and as you are probably aware of by now, it returns nothing, but it does help us initialize the object. So maybe you have some sort of name you want to give the object or something else. 
in the initializer, you can do a lot of that setup. But I'm going to show you one more example that should help you grasp this concept. And this time we're going to create a class called vehicle. And we're going to do the same thing as earlier, we're going to use the new Dunder method, except this time, we're not going to use the args and keyword args, we're just going to add wheels of type integer. And actually, I need to paste in two classes, which I do not want to write by hand. So right below that, I'm going to paste in a motorbike and a car. These are two classes that I'm going to use for this example. And all they do is initialize an object, one's a motorbike and one's a car. But the reason I did that is because in new, what we're going to do here is check if wheels is equal to two, then we're going to return a motorbike. If wheels is equal to four, then we will return a car else, or actually that should be elif, else return super dot new, and we're going to pass in the class again. So we create a new vehicle class, then inside the initializer, we can type in def in it. And here we need to include wheels of type integer. So the arguments and the keyword arguments for new must match the ones of the initializer. Otherwise, of course, you can use args and keyword args, which make it a bit more flexible for your initializer. So let's change that back to wheels. So everything is working. And here we'll type in self dot wheels is equal to wheels. And we will initialize this object right after so f initializing vehicle with wheels, wheels, because some cars might have a 1000 wheels. Okay, that's a bad example. But some cars might have more wheels than four. And we want to handle that if that happens. So now in this example, we have the constructor right here, which takes care of the object creation. So depending on what we insert for the wheels, we're going to get a different object back. But always remember to return something or else the initializer will never get called. And if we go all the way to the bottom and actually try to use this code, we can type in that MB for motorbike is equal to a vehicle with two wheels. And if we run that, we will get initializing motorbike because up here, it triggered the if wheels is equal to two, and it returned to us a motorbike object. The second example can be a bus, we can say there's a vehicle with uh, 20 wheels, it's an interesting bus. And if we run that, we will get initializing a vehicle with 20 wheels because if failed, elif failed, but else worked. So we created a new object, which then triggered the initializer, which triggered all of this code. And if we use four, it's going to initialize the car because a car in our definition has four wheels. So as you can see, using the new Danda method can be very useful with object creation if you want to have some custom functionality and return an altered version of the class, or even if you want to implement the singleton pattern, you can do that with the new Danda method, which always gets called before the initializer. But anyways, I hope this intro to the new Dunder method helped. It's not something you learn immediately in Python. And I actually learned it just a couple of weeks ago. So I mean, that's already three years I didn't know about it or actually ever used it. But it's always cool to know about these things in case you do want to use them. In case you're looking for something a bit more technical, M coding has a really good video on the technicalities of how this works. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.